Yo, what's up, y'all? It's MMA Analyst here to do my predictions for UFC 118 this Saturday, only on pay-per-view. It's not the same. I try to do it every now and then, but that one time I was sick and my throat was messing up, I was on point. But anyways, rocking my Countryman's Fist shirt, the Kimura shirt. Y'all, you know, it's looking good. Walking down the street, people are like, yo, man, that's a tight shirt. I'm like, thank you, man. Go to countrymanfist.com. True story. Uh, it was a competition that, you know, they had out there, or, or we had, I had, whatever. And uh, it was for, you know, whoever got the most picks uh, and whatnot for, I believe it was UFC 117. We're going to have it again. It's not going to be exactly a predictions competition in, in the sense that you would expect. So, you know, keep listening, you know. Uh, it's actually going to be, the information will be given in the co-main event prediction, so... Actually, this, I don't know, it looked like I was doing bunny ears. There we go, I was doing quotations. So, let's get right down to it. BJ Penn versus Frankie Edgar. Obviously, this is a rematch. Um, you know what, it's kind of strange. After the first fight, I was like, man, that's BS, BJ Penn won. A lot of people were jumping up and down and, you know, man, you know, Frankie Edgar didn't win that fight, da-da-da-da-da, but... It was really strange because it seemed like BJ Penn knew he lost. Even though, you know, uh, a lot, most of the websites, you know, had it for BJ Penn. And a lot of the, you know, the fans had it for BJ Penn. And the writers had it for BJ Penn. You know, this was not a situation at the end of the fight where BJ Penn had his hands up. And he was like, yay, I won. He was standing there kind of waiting for the bad news. As soon as he says, Frank Yeager... Frank Yeager's corner, who was already celebrating, was, you know, you know, validated. Yeah, go celebrate. You won. And BJ Penn immediately turns to him like, yeah, I know you won. So, you know, I think BJ Penn realized, you know, win or lose here, you know, I, I sucked. And uh, there's a potential that it's going to be lose. And that's what happened. It was a fight where Frank Yeager moved around. He moved around, in and out. Um, really just... Building up points, racking up points, not really doing any damage, not really trying to knock anybody out, not really trying to actually hit anybody, but more or less trying to get the points. Bam, in, move, bounce side to side, get in, one, two, one of them missed, but don't matter, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. And BJ Penn was more or less flat-footed, standing there throwing one punch at a time all the way to his loss. I personally think he won, but it clearly something was going on with BJ Penn. Whether it's physical, mental, or just he had a bad night, that's not the normal BJ Penn that we see at 155. So, you know, it doesn't really matter. If you come out and you look that bad, you probably are going to lose if somebody else, you know, steps up and has the best fight, um, you know, of, or one of the best fights of their career. So, Frankie Edgar... Coming off the victory, before that, he uh, he actually wasn't the number one contender. The the only loss on his career, Gray Maynard, he was the number one contender for the lightweight uh, belt or title shot. And he went out there and put a sloppy, gross, doo-doo fight against um, Nate Diaz. He won, but it didn't matter. Dana was like, yo, we're not putting that on the main event against, against BJ. And Frankie Edgar was sitting in the crowd, just, you know, chilling, watching, and look how it unfolded. He got the title shot. He's got a win over Matt Veach, Sean Shirk, um, Hermes Franca, Spencer Fisher, Mark Bocek, Tyson Griffin, Jim Miller. Uh, you know, some really good wins for Frankie Edgar, and obviously the most important and the biggest against BJ Penn. BJ Penn was coming off his you know, absolute demolishing of Diego Sanchez, another beatdown over Kenny Florian, his loss to GSP, um, you know, his win over, his nasty win over Sean Shirk, his beatdown over Joe Stevenson, his beatdown over Jens Palmer. He was basically in the middle of a beatdown fest. But, uh, you know, he came out in this fight and he just didn't do what he needed to do. What's going to happen in the next fight in the fight coming up on, what is that, uh, August 28th. I think we're going to see more or less the regular BJ Penn at 118. He never kind of alluded or said anything about an injury. Um, you know, he, he kind of gave, um, he kind of gave 
Edgar his props and respect up until, you know, a few weeks ago when he started saying stuff where he still wasn't saying that he was injured or anything. It was more or less, you know, the way Frankie Edgar won that fight was bogus. Um, but I think he's going to go out there and he's actually going to fight this time instead of a glorified sparring match where he loses. I think uh, he has better hands. He's got better footwork. He's got better ground game. Um, his wrestling defense is awesome, which really didn't matter because, you know, Frankie Edgar was only going for a couple takedowns here, there, and it got right back to the feet. So I think BJ Penn fighting the way BJ Penn normally fights at lightweight equals BJ Penn beating anybody in the world at lightweight, including Frankie Edgar. So that's what I'm looking forward to happening. On to the next fight. James Tony versus Randy Couture. Foolishness, y'all. Absolutely foolishness. But I'm not going to lie. This is the fight that I'm looking forward to the most. Some people say freak show. Some other people, like myself, would just say whack as hell. But it is going on. Uh, James Tony talks so much trash. Chase down Dana. I think he's talking trash. I know he's talking. I don't know if he's speaking English. I don't know what's going on. I still think that this fight's somehow not going to happen. We're like 48 hours out, and I still am waiting for for the twist, for the for the James Tony. He, you know, he maybe he's weighing 20 pounds overweight. I don't know if this is supposed to be at at uh, at 205 or what. I just I just don't think this fight's going to happen. I just don't I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, but that's not what the prediction is all about. This is more or less we're going to talk about what would happen if the fight does happen. And this is what I think is going to happen. A lot of people are talking about Randy Couture is going to lay on James Tony until what's he going to lay on somebody for? The only reason people lay on the other dude is because they're worried about what the other guy is going to do defensively. Maybe turn it to offense. Maybe they're afraid of losing the position. Randy's not afraid of losing position against James Tony. Some people even said these are a few of the misconceptions, misconceptions about this fight. <clears throat> Some people even said Randy Couture is going to come out. He's going to take uh, James Tony down. He's going to pass guard. Irks. Back that up. Pass guard. Do you really think that Randy Couture is going to take down uh, James Tony and end up in guard? No. He's going to end up in side control. He might end up in mount. He might end up in automatic TKO. So those are two things that I don't believe are going to happen. One, we're not going to see James Tony, um, you know, get taken down and have the wherewithal and the knowledge in his f few months of training and limited training. Uh, I don't think he's going to get taken down and all of a sudden close his guard up and wrap him up. And then Randy's going to, oh, well, let me try and pass this solid guard. No, not happening. Um, number two, uh, you know, James Tony, he's going to come out like a boxer. He's going to come out a side stance. Easiest takedown of, J of Randy Couture's entire life. If Randy Couture would have fought, uh, I don't know. This is the easiest fight, honestly. Of, this is the easiest takedown of his entire career. I mean, this fight's good. Look, by the way, obviously this is more of a rant. Prediction contest. Exactly what round, who's the winner, and what seconds. That's, that's it for this one. That's the whole competition. All you have to do is say winner blank, what round, by what method, <clears throat> and exactly what is the second. The exact time. Right, and we're talking about what it says, uh, you know, going into the fight. So, like, if you know, if it's one minute and six seconds, so I don't mean one minute and six seconds on the clock, but I mean one minute and six seconds into the fight. That's my pick because I'm just putting it out there. One minute, six seconds. Randy Couture comes out. This is the whole fight right here. Bam! Y'all don't even have to watch it. Just, just you know, hear what I'm saying. You don't even have to watch it. Here's how it goes. Uh, homeboy Mike Goldberg. Here we go. Randy comes out. Bam. He kind of just shuffles in. Hop, hop, double leg. A double leg right into side control. No kind of nothing. Now, at this point, do we really expect uh, 
James Tony to have any idea what to do against Randy. He might have practiced it in training. We might have seen it in a few videos, but he doesn't know what he's doing really. Right to side control. I don't know if he's going to run right to mount. I don't know if he's just going to pound him out with elbows. Maybe he goes to mount. If he does go to mount, I don't even think he's going to have the wherewithal and the knowledge to even turn around and just give up a rear naked choke. It's going to be TKO by strikes. That's it. That's it. This is ridiculous. Boxing versus MMA. This is not boxing versus MMA. You know what I mean? We already know who the winner of boxing versus MMA is in an MMA bout. Yes. Ray Mercer went out there and smashed Tim Sylvia in eight seconds. Cool. There are other possibilities, though. And that's why I brought that up. If Randy Couture goes out there and starts throwing leg kicks, which he did say he might do. He said, I'm going to kick the hell out of his legs. Not a good plan. Not a good plan. But when a kick is the perfect strike to counter with punches. Don't do it, Randy. There's no reason to throw any kicks. You don't need to be throwing a kick and he come over the top and blast you in your face. Don't do it. We don't need to try and make examples. We know people can be cut down. I believe you could chop down uh, James Tony with your kicks. But don't do it. Just for the record, I'm actually rooting for James Tony in this. Just because a win for James Tony in this would be hilarious. It would be just absolutely ridiculous. The kind of foolishness, and I say that with, <clears throat> with all seriousness, that we would hear spew from James Tony's mouth in that post-fight conference, uh, uh, press conference and an interview with Joe Rogan live and, and all this. Oh, man, that would be just too much. It will be hilarious. So I'm actually rooting for James Tony to F everything up. It's not going to happen, y'all. This is not going to happen. Anything can happen, but I'm going with the serious odds here. James Tony has no shot. They got him as a 5-1 to one underdog. You know what I mean? If you put money on James Tony, that's up to you. But I say you might as well just throw your money up in the air in the middle of a tornado and walk away. After James Tony loses in under a minute, 30 seconds. But I say one minute and six seconds. That's tough. That's a tough time. You know, I'm putting some real restrictions on on Randy Couture's ability to feel the fight out. I'm saying, you know, will James Tony use the word faggot in his post fight? How do you feel, James Tony? Oh, but I don't even know, man. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, like a faggot. I'm just saying. I think it's going to happen. <sighs> I spent lots of time on that foolishness, but it's going to be good. Mario Miranda versus Damian Maya. Okay, this is pretty simple. Um, Mario Miranda, Brazilian, you know, jiu jitsu. He's got pretty good wrestling. Um, he's got a loss to, Ger to, uh, to Gerald Harris by TKO punches. Gerald Harris, Harold, yes, the wrestler, yes, the tough guy. He's fighting Damian Maya, one of the best guys with jiu-jitsu in, in MMA. Um, coming off a loss to Anderson Silva. Um, an embarrassing loss. But a spirited loss at the same time in Abu Dhabi. Before that, he had the fight of the win over Dan Miller where he was just standing and striking the whole time. Before that, a uh, very quick 21-second loss to Nate Marquardt. Before that, a uh, very quick triangle submission over Charles Sonnen. Look, y'all, come on. Get out of here. Damian Maya gets his fight to the ground and wins by submission. That's it. What do you want from me? There's no reason to try and be analytical about this. You know, um, Damian Maya will be able to get the fight to the ground. And he will be able to get the submission. If he doesn't try and get to the fight to the ground, I'm I'm gonna be really upset with Damian Maya. Because he'll probably lose. And he'll also lose, you know, not doing the right game plan. So that's enough with that. Damian Maya, submission over Mario Miranda. If it doesn't go down like that, it's because Damian Maya's a retard. Gray Maynard versus Kenny Florian. This is the tough one here. Now we've got Gray Maynard. Who is undefeated? Uh, he's, you know, he was the number one contender. They say that this fight will determine who gets the the next lightweight shot against either the winner, you know, BJ Penn or Frankie Edgar. 
Gray Maynard uh, does have a win over Frankie Edgar. He has no losses. He has a no contest where against Rob Everson, he there was like a double KO basically. But other than that, he went out there. He you know they they put him up against uh, they put him out there against Roger Huerta to make sure Roger Huerta didn't uh, leave the UFC with the win. I think that was his last fight. And uh, that was a close one, actually. Um, Jim Miller, he beat him, beat Rich Clemeni. Again, Frank Edgar. His last fight was a doo-doo fest against uh, Nate Diaz. Now he's coming against Kenny Florian. Kenny Florian, uh, really good jujitsu, much improved striking. Showed some of that striking against Takanori Gomi. Showed some pretty good striking. And then a uh, great ground game against Clay Guida. Same thing against uh, Joe Stevenson and Roger Huerta. And his only loss recently was to BJ Penn. Prior to that, he did lose to Sean Jerk in his first title shot uh, attempt or chance. Anyways, the situation in this fight for me is who's better where. You've got Kenny Florian, who is definitely better than sloppy-ass Gray Maynard wrestler striker on the feet. And on the ground, he's definitely got the better ground game. Also, you have... Gray Maynard, who is good in the in between. So there's the part where you're standing up, there's the part where you're on the ground, and Gray Maynard is good in the middle. Like, how do you get that fight to the ground? That's called wrestling, right? He's got better wrestling. But once he gets it to the ground, automatically he loses his, uh, you know, he loses his um, his strength. Uh, he has never, uh, he, he, I don't, he's never been submitted in his pro career. But he has been submitted on the Ultimate Fighter. Um, yeah. I think he got submitted by... I think it was... I forget. I don't remember tough stuff. But I do know that he lost. And he lost by submission. And uh, in this fight, I think he's going to be on the feet. He's going to be getting beat up on the feet. He's going to get tagged. He's going to come up with these wild punches. These loopy, gross punches. And Kenny Florian's going to have straight down the pipe jabs and crosses, some nice movement. And when it goes to the ground, I think Kenny Florian's going to be able to win that fight on the ground as well. So really, I don't see where Gray Maynard wins this fight other than being able to just take Kenny Florian down over and over again and not get submitted. And I don't think he's going to be able to do that. I've got Kenny Florian winning this fight. Um, To be honest, I've got him winning by... uh, decision because I think Gray Maynard is going to completely abandon his ground game and and Gray Maynard is just going to go out there and get outboxed because that's what he likes to do recently. Now we have Nate Diaz versus Marcus Davis. Uh, Basically, I've got Nate Diaz going out there and putting the one-two on him all day. Marcus Davis coming forward, throwing wild punches. Nate Diaz moving back, putting on the one-two, one-two, moving around, kind of looking looking good like he did against Rory Markham and bloodying up Marcus Davis and just really just putting on a feet fest. And then when it does get taken to the ground, if it does get taken to the ground, which it probably will because Diaz takedown defense isn't all that great. Um, he'll be able to be all right and get back to his feet. Um, and I think that's what the fight's going to look like for that one there. So I'm picking Nate Diaz by, uh, I'm going to say, uh, a nasty beatdown type of soft Diaz-like, uh, stand-up beatdown. I've got Joe Lozon over Put Me Back In Rudiger. You know, if y'all didn't see it, Put Me Back In. Put Me Back In. He was in The Ultimate Fighter. People have died in battle with more, with like in war, like World War Two, Vietnam, World War One, anything, y'all. They've been shot in the stomach, laying on the ground, people bloody all around them, you know, intestines on the knees, and they went out with more pride and, and stuff than this dude trying to get put back in the sauna. It was crazy. Um, but he's went on a nice little run. He's, he actually campaigned for like one month, get me back in the UFC, and Dana's like, all right, let's get in there. Joe Lozon. But I picked Joe Lozon for that win. I'm picking Nick Lentz over Andre Winner. I'm picking Dan Miller over John Salter. If Dan Winner loses to John Salter, that's four in a row. He's out. I'm surprised he's not out already. Um, I've got Greg Soto over Nick Osispak or Osip Zach. I don't know, man. Over Nick. 
Greg over Nick. And I've got uh, Mike Pierce over uh, Amakar Alves. However, Amakar Alves could win that one. I'm just putting that out there. They, I guess they all could, but and that's kind of a stupid thing to say. But if I had to pick one of those where I'm like, you know what? I would rather go with the other guy. It could be that fight right there. But anyways, y'all. UFC 118. Get your picks in. My pick, I'm not really eligible for my own competition, but I'm picking Randy Couture wins one minute, six seconds into the first round by TKO. See, that's how you do it. What do you guys think? MMA, y'all. It's important. Peace.